Hi, my name is Julia, and I'm talking to you today because um, um, on February 5th of last year, I got into a car accident where my car flipped three times, and I suffered uh, a neck fracture. It was an oblantoid anterior fracture of the C2 vertebra. There's not a whole lot of medical consensus about how you deal with that. There are three options as far as I can tell, one of which is um, you install like a halo brace where you screw screws into the head and screws into the shoulder. Um, another is neck surgery where they fuse your, your vertebra. And I was lucky enough, <laughs> lucky me, um, to, um, to have to deal with this thing. I wore this for three and a half months. It was not my favorite experience in my life. Um, that being said, I was really lucky not to get surgery and not to have to wear the halo brace. It was unlucky that I had to stay static or that I was advised to stay static for so long by my doctors. Um, after I had the brace off, after that three and a half months, I was told to stay sort of unmoving for another six weeks. So at the end of that six weeks, like the scar tissue, like the muscle stasis stagnation in my shoulders, my neck were so bad that I was, I felt like I'd refractured my neck, but I had a CAT scan and they said, oh, you're fine. Um, you're healed. Here's a prescription to go to PT. Um, they, they didn't have any particular recommendations as to PT. Um, luckily for me, um, I had a really good friend who had suggested to me um, all along that I be seeing Malin Threadgill of neuromuscular therapy so that I could maybe um, work on regaining some of the movement in the neck joint because the problem was when I got out of the brace I could move like this. That was literally how I moved my head. I moved my entire body to move my head. And that really wasn't very good. It was like really like hard to cross streets. You know, like you, you think about your parents telling you you should look both ways. Well, you're like, <laughs> and that's kind of ridiculous. Um, but by the time Malin was done treating me the first time, I could move my head. Um, it, was, it was dramatic, you know, like I could actually move my head like this. And now I can move my head like this. I mean, I can move my head further than I could before the accident and um, it's really quite remarkable because my posture was absolutely horrible before the accident and now my posture is tremendously better. Um, the shoulder pain, the rib pain, the hip pain, the lower back pain, all of the things that come with flipping a car three times, all of those things are resolved. All of those are a result of Malin treating me and I'm super grateful to him. Um, He's been so professional. I'm not used to this kind of treatment. Um, it was something that I, you know, immediately trusted him with. I felt like he was, <clears throat> you know, incredibly, incredibly responsible, professional. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was very intuitive and instinctive in how he treated me. And I'm very, very, very grateful to him because without him at this point, I do believe that um, in spite of the fact that I, I did survive an, an accident that would normally kill people, and um, I survived it without being paralyzed, um, I still think that I would have been incredibly handicapped were it not for Malin. <laughs> and I owe his, I owe him so many thanks for my mobility, for my um, increased strength, my increased flexibility, um, and just my general <laughs> functionality. I'm, I'm really grateful to you, Malin. You're an awesome person, and thank you so much for everything you've done.